solving Indian Patent Agent Exam May 2022, Paper 1 Part B. Please note that all the information provided in this video is based on the Patents Act of 1970, and the Patents Rules of 2003, as updated or amended until April 2023 when this video was created. It is recommended that you verify the latest information on amendments to the Patent Act, and Patent Rules from April 2023 onwards while watching this video. We have put in a great deal of care and effort into creating this video by referring to the Patents Act of 1970, and the Patents Rules of 2003, as updated or amended until April 2023. We have also reviewed the content with experts in this field multiple times. However, there is still a possibility of typos or ambiguity in some answers. We kindly request you to leave a comment under the video with the correct information and reference links if you notice any mistakes. The Indian Patent Agent Exam consists of two papers, Paper 1 and Paper 2. Paper 1 consists of three parts Part A, 60 marks, Part B, 10 marks, and Part C, 30 marks. There is no negative marking. Candidates have two hours to complete this paper. In this video, we'll be providing solutions to Paper 1, Part B. Part B is of 10 marks and consists of 10 true or false type questions of 1 mark each. For each question, out of 4 options only one option is correct. Answer should be given as A, B, C or D as given here in below. A. Statement 1 is true, 2 is false. B. Statement 1 is false, 2 is true. C. Statement 1 and 2 both are false. D. Statement 1 and 2 both are true. Question 31. 1. A request for examination under Section 11B can be filed by the applicant or any interested person. 2. If request for examination is filed by any interested person, then the first statement of objections, FER, is issued to the interested person who has filed the request for examination. The correct answer to question 31 is option A. Statement 1 is true, 2 is false. Explanation According to Section 11B of the Indian Patents Act, a request for examination of a patent application can be filed by either the applicant or any other interested person. However, if the request for examination is filed by an interested person, the first statement of objections, FER or first examination report, is still issued to the applicant and not to the interested person who filed the request for examination. So, in this case, statement 1 is true and statement 2 is false. Question 32. 1. An application for review of decision shall be filed in Form 24 within three months from the date of communication of the decision. 2. An application for review of decision shall be filed in Form 23 within one month from the date of communication of the decision. The correct answer to question 32 is option C. Statement 1 and 2 both are false. Explanation According to Rule 130 of the Indian Patents Rules, 2003, an application for review of a decision by the controller under Clause F of Subsection 1 of Section 77 should be made using Form 24 or within one month from the date of communication of such decision to the applicant. The applicant may request an extension of time not exceeding one month by making a request using Form 4. Therefore, Statement 1 is false and Statement 2 is also false. Question 33. You have filed an application on behalf of an SME client. The distinguishing feature of the invention is a hinge made of aluminum. Controller has cited a prior art for anticipation which teaches all limitations of your claim 1, except that the hinge is taught to be made of any metals. 1. The claims are anticipated, even though aluminum is not specifically disclosed in the prior art. Persons skilled in the art readily recognize aluminum as a metal. 2. The claims are not anticipated. Even though aluminum is readily recognized as a metal by a person skilled in the art, aluminum has not been specifically disclosed in the prior art. The correct answer to question 33 is option B. Statement 1 is false and statement 2 is true. Explanation Even though aluminum is readily recognized as a metal by a person skilled in the art, 
It has not been specifically disclosed in the prior art and therefore the claims are not anticipated. Anticipation occurs when a single prior art reference discloses all the elements of a claimed invention. In this case, the prior art reference cited by the controller teaches all the limitations of claim 1, except that the hinge is taught to be made of any metal, not specifically aluminum. Statement 1 is false because, even though aluminum is readily recognized as a metal by a person skilled in the art, it has not been specifically disclosed in the prior art. Therefore, the claims are not anticipated. Statement 2 is true because, even though aluminum is readily recognized as a metal by a person skilled in the art, it has not been specifically disclosed in the prior art. Therefore, the claims are not anticipated. Question 34. Geeta and Sita are final year B.Tech students in the College of Engineering, Bhavanagar. They have assigned their invention to ABC Incorporated. 1. Geeta and Sita can sign the declaration of inventors in Form 1 and ABC can furnish it as proof of right. 2. Geeta and Sita can sign a deed of assignment transferring their rights to apply for patent to ABC and ABC can furnish the assignment deed as proof of right. The correct answer to question 34 is option D. Statement 1 and 2 both are true. Explanation in this scenario, Gita and Sita have assigned their invention to ABC Incorporated. This means that they have transferred their rights to apply for a patent for the invention to ABC Incorporated. Statement 1 is true. Gita and Sita can sign the declaration of inventors in Form 1, and ABC Incorporated can furnish it as proof of right to apply for a patent for the invention. Statement 2 is also true. Gita and Sita can sign a deed of assignment transferring their rights to apply for a patent for the invention to ABC Incorporated, and ABC Incorporated can furnish the assignment deed as proof of right to apply for a patent for the invention. Question 35. 1. A patent agent can appear for a hearing before the controller in proceedings related to a patent application to an advocate, who is not a patent agent can appear for a hearing before the controller in proceedings related to a patent application. The correct answer to question 35 is option D. Statement 1 and 2 both are true. Explanation According to section 127 of the Patents Act, a patent agent can appear on behalf of any person in proceedings under the Act before the controller, appellate board, or any other authority. Therefore, statement 1 is true. As per Section 132 B of the Patents Act, an advocate, who is not a patent agent, can appear for a hearing before the controller on behalf of a party in proceedings related to a patent application. Question 36. 1. Renewal fees shall not be paid for the patent of addition. 2. Renewal fees shall not be paid for the patent granted for divisional application. The correct answer to question 36 is option A. Statement 1 is true, 2 is false. Explanation Patent of addition, when an invention is a slight modification of the earlier invention for which he has already applied for or has obtained a patent, the applicant can go for a patent of addition if the modification in the invention is new. One of the benefits of filing a patent of addition is that there is no need to pay a separate renewal fee for the patent of addition during the term of the main patent and it expires along with the main patent. Therefore statement 1 is true. Divisional application. When an application claims more than one invention, the applicant on his own or to meet the official objection on the ground of plurality or distinct invention may divide the application and file two or more applications, as the case may be for each of the inventions. This type of application, divided out of the parent one, is known as a divisional application. The divisional application is treated as a separate patent application and goes through the same examination process as any other patent application. Therefore, statement to renewal fees shall not be paid for the patent granted for divisional application is false. Question 37. 1. Patent agents shall file all documents at patent office only by electronic transmission duly authenticated, when acting on behalf of multinational companies. 2. 
patent agents may file physical copies of documents at patent office when acting on behalf of applicants who are natural persons the correct answer is option a statement 1 is true and statement 2 is false explanation according to rule 61a notwithstanding anything contained in sub rule 1 a patent agent shall file leave make or give all documents only by electronic transmission duly authenticated provided that any document if asked to be submitted in original shall be submitted within a period of 15 days failing which such documents shall be deemed not to have been filed question 38 Gotham has filed an ordinary application for his invention later on he came to know that he can file PCT international application within 12 months from the date of filing of Indian application claiming Indian priority he has filed a PCT application and he has filed the national phase application in India one Gotham shall make the request for examination for both the applications filed in India two Gotham shall make the request for examination only for one of the applications filed in India. The correct answer to question 38 is option B. Statement 1 is false, 2 is true. Explanation Gotham should make the request for examination only for one of the applications filed in India. In India, a request for examination must be made within 48 months from the priority date, as per Section 11B of the Indian Patent Act, 1970. For a PCT national phase application filed in India, an express request for examination can be filed before the expiration of 31 months from the earliest priority application date. Therefore, Gautam should make the request for examination only for his PCT national phase application in India. Question 39. A company Covicare Pharma, want to change its address of service and also wants to make voluntary technical amendment in the specification of same application. The above two statutory actions shall be completed by 1. Filing two Form 13. 2. Filing one Form 13 and one Form 6. The correct answer to question 39 is option A. Statement 1 is true, 2 is false. Explanation. Form 13 is for application for amendment of the application for patent or complete specification. Form 6 is for claim or request regarding any change in applicant for patent. Hence, Covi Care Pharma should file two Form 13s, one Form 13 to change its address of service and one Form 13 to make a voluntary technical amendment in the specification of the same application. Question 40. Barbara, a US citizen has been residing in India continuously for the past two years. She is a scientist at the Global Research Center of an U.S. automobile company in Bangalore. Barbara has invented a novel airbag release mechanism for which her employer wishes to apply for patent in USA. Her employer does not wish to file any patent application in India as their products are not sold here. One. Barbara and her employer can proceed with the U.S. application without making any request for permission under Section 39 as she is a U.S. citizen working with a U.S. company. 2. Barbara has to make a request for permission to apply for patent outside India under Section 39 before proceeding with the patent application in USA. The correct answer to question 40 is option B. Statement 1 is false, 2 is true. Explanation. Barbara has to make a request for permission to apply for a patent outside India under Section 39 before proceeding with the patent application in the USA. Section 39 of the Indian Patents Act, 1970, requires that residents of India obtain permission from the Controller General of Patents before applying for a patent for an invention in a foreign country without first applying for a corresponding patent in India. Since Barbara has been residing in India continuously for the past two years, she is considered a resident of India and must comply with the requirements of Section 39 before proceeding with the patent application in the USA. We hope you found this video helpful. If so, please share it with your friends or relevant groups preparing for the patent agent examination. Consider subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell icon for new video notifications, so you never miss out on our latest content and updates. We appreciate your feedback in the comments section and a thumbs up on this video.
your support inspires us to create more informative content. Check out our IPR and Patent Agent Examination Guidance Playlist for more resources. Thank you for your support.